Impress promotes trust in journalism by setting professional standards, standards which are set out in the code on our website. One of the fundamental provisions of the Impress Code is accuracy. Uh, we require that journalists, um, not that they're impartial or that they don't take a position about things, people are free to be partisan, but they've got to get it right. Uh, and that means their facts have got to be accurate. And the code requires us to be accurate, for journalists to be accurate, and for it to be a breach of the code if either they publish things which aren't true or they neglect to check things out. By stressing accuracy in this way and taking complaints from people when they think something that's published is inaccurate, we're promoting the cause of investigative journalism which is all about exposing the real facts. The code is really clear about attribution and plagiarism. It says essentially that publications must credit the source of any uh, material that they use and that if they don't credit they must make uh, that correction very obvious uh, at the earliest opportunity. So it's really simple, uh, you mustn't take other people's content without crediting it. Well, the reason that there is special protection for children, and I think it's universally accepted there should be special protection for children, is that they are a particularly vulnerable time of their life. It's a period in which you develop, you change, you don't have a full understanding of society or your position in society. And therefore, it's very important they are given special protection because they don't necessarily understand the full impact a breach of their privacy or an identification in the media would have. Unless it's a matter of exceptional public interest, the rule is that the press should not publish an image of a child or other identifying features or interview a child. One of the aspects of the Impress Code which I think is really important is that the code prevents journalists from discrimination against groups. What that means is we're not going to let people write prejudicial things that stir up hatred against groups in the community. Harassment, which aims to deal with the idea of protecting the public really, it's about if um, a member of the public is approached by a journalist and they feel that they've been deceived or they feel that um, they're intimidated in, in any way, we wanted to encapsulate um, the, that sort of scenario and um, provide protections within our code for, for that so that it doesn't happen. So within our harassment clause we say that um, unless it's a public interest otherwise for you know cases of investigative journalism um, the journalist must identify themselves and the publication that they work for to that member of the public if they're told to go away, if you know, if they're told, you know, I don't want to know, they do so. So it's just about making sure really that um, journalists understand the best practice, the best way to operate, the best, you know, it's about understanding um, the public's needs versus, you know, the journalists doing their job. Well, we have a justice clause in the standards code because it's very important that everyone is entitled to a fair trial and there are several different provisions in the code which helps that to happen. Uh, one, for instance, is not prejudicing court cases while they're going on. Another one is not paying um, witnesses uh, in a way that would be uh, illegal. And there are also rules on not naming certain individuals involved in court cases, for example, um, victims of sexual assault, where it be uh, unlawful to do so. So it's a really uh, quite detailed clause but its main purpose is very simple. It's there to ensure that everyone can have a fair trial. In the hurry to get a story there's always a danger that journalists will overstep the mark and intrude on people's privacy um, and that danger is greater than ever today with the internet and social media which means that news travels faster than ever before. Um, that's why the Impress Code has strong provisions on privacy, which can only be overridden in the, in, in the case of strong public interest. Um, and for example, that means that um, uh, people are protected uh, in the aftermath of a disaster when they've suffered 
private grief and loss of loved ones um, from press intrusion, while at the same time, um, journalists are allowed to, in the public interest, publish, for example, information on the tax avoidance measures of wealthy individuals. The Impress Code protects and defends investigative journalism because, among other things, it ensures that journalists will protect their sources. If you're an investigative journalist, to have sources, confidential sources, who can trust you is absolutely vital. So we require journalists who sign up to the Impress Code to protect their sources and to protect their confidentiality, um, to protect their vulnerabilities and to earn their trust in that way. The suicide clause is very much written in order to um, protect. It's about not providing excessive detail about the methods that may have been used for um, in, a, in a suicide. Um, and you know, we just wanted to recognise that um, that sort of detail is unnecessary and may also be harmful. Um, and you know, recognise circumstances where that has happened in publications before and it may have led to different problems. So that, that's what that code was written in mind of. The main thing, I think, comes back to our um, belief in trustworthiness, in trustworthy journalism. And if people, readers, the general public feel that the information that they're reading has been bought, that, that somebody has paid money or um, in other, has used other sorts of influence to get that information across, then it becomes less trustworthy. So transparency is about saying, owning up to where there might be a special interest behind the information that you're publishing. And we felt that that was sufficiently important to actually make one of the provisions of the code.